Hi there, and welcome to this video on A-Level Biology for the AQA specification, focusing on the topic of biological molecules, and in particular, lipids. I'm Manisha from StudyMind, where we help you to revise A-Level Biology with our helpful video tutorials tailored to your subject, your specification, and to you. If you're new here, please make sure to click that subscribe button. And whilst you're watching, feel free to leave any comments down below of anything you're unsure about, and let us know if it's your first time watching so we can send you our free revision resources. We also have helpful timestamps to guide you through the specification. So, let's get started. Welcome to lesson three of eight in this tutorial, covering lipids. This is the third lesson in our series of eight videos on the topic of biological molecules. In the last lesson, we looked at common monosaccharides and polysaccharides. Here are the key learning objectives for today's lesson. The first is to look at the structure of triglycerides and phospholipids, then move on to fatty acids and the tests for lipids. Here are the key learning objectives for today's lesson. Feel free to pause the video now and have a quick read through them before we begin. First, we will look at the groups of lipids. Lipids are involved in various biological processes, ranging from providing structure to a cell, to metabolism, to even playing a role in animal immune systems. They are organic molecules and contain large amounts of carbon and hydrogen within their chemical structures. Lipids contain fatty acids, which contain hydrocarbon chains. Hydrocarbon chains are extremely long networks of carbons and hydrogens, which are covalently bonded to one another. There will be two types of lipids we're going to cover in this video. Next, we will look at triglyceride formation. Triglycerides are special cases of lipids which consist of one molecule of glycerol covalently bonded to three molecules of fatty acids. Glycerol is a type of organic molecule referred to as an alcohol because of its presence of hydroxyl groups in its structure. Fatty acids contain a carboxyl group and a hydrocarbon tail. Fatty acids are highly hydrophobic and they are insoluble in water. Next, we will look at the R group of fatty acids. The R group of a fatty acid can be saturated or unsaturated. Saturated fatty acids have no double bond between the carbons. Unsaturated fatty acids have at least one double bond between a pair of carbon atoms. They will have some double or triple bonds, or a combination of both, in addition to these single bonds. Here's a comparison of the two structures. Now we will look at the condensation reactions of glycerol and fatty acids. As you may have guessed, triglyceride formation occurs via a condensation reaction. It covalently bonds one molecule of glycerol to three molecules of fatty acids. Here, we can see the process in more detail. Here's a balanced condensation reaction. It's important to remember that each of the glycerols is bonded to a fatty acid by a carbon-oxygen-carbon -carbon bond, or a COC bond. This bond is known as an ester bond and is very important for you to remember. As with everything else we have learnt so far, a triglyceride can be broken down into one glycerol and three fatty acids by hydrolysis. As shown here, if you draw a fatty acid in the exam, you can just use the letter R to denote the fatty acid hydrocarbon chain, which can be of variable length. Our next points will cover phospholipids in more detail. Triglycerides are primarily used as energy storage molecules. 
During metabolic processes, such as respiration, the fatty acid chains of triglycerides can be broken down in order to release very large amounts of stored chemical energy. They are very efficient and store twice as much energy as carbohydrates. The hydrophobic fatty acid chains will arrange themselves to hide away from water. Therefore, triglycerides don't affect the osmotic potential of cells and do not cause swelling due to the influx of water. Also, the presence of the long hydrocarbon chains in the fatty acids allows for a lot of chemical energy to be stored in them. Phospholipids have one glycerol, two fatty acids and a phosphate group attached together. One of the fatty acid chains will be saturated, whilst the second one is unsaturated. The phosphate groups can have extensions, which attribute to the unique properties of the different phospholipids. These are said to be amphipathic. This means they have both hydrophilic, which is attracted to water, and hydrophobic, which is repelled from water, regions. Here's a detailed diagram. We will explore this structure in more detail in another tutorial, but let's have a quick run through it here. Phospholipids are found in cell membranes. The barrier formed is known as a phospholipid bilayer, which is another name for cell membrane. Since cells have an aqueous solution both outside in the extracellular fluid and inside in the cytoplasm, the hydrophilic heads will face outwards and the hydrophobic tails will face inwards. This means that a bilayer is formed. Finally, we will look at the emulsion test for lipids. First, we must add ethanol to shake the sample and vigorously shake for one minute. Next, we pour the entire solution into a test tube containing water. Because the lipids are insoluble in water, they will become immiscible and will not mix with the water. Any lipids in the sample will float to the top to form a white emulsion. The higher the concentration of the lipids, the more apparent the milky colour will become. We've now covered all the specification points for this lesson. Feel free to pause the video now and re-watch anything you are unsure about. Let's go through our take-home points for this video. Triglycerides and phospholipids are the two major classes of lipids you need to know. Triglycerides are made up of one glycerol and three fatty acids, and they are formed by a condensation reaction. Esterbonds are formed between glycerol molecules and fatty acids. Fatty acids are hydrophobic. We looked at phospholipid structure and how they form a bilayer. Finally, we looked at how triglycerides are mainly used for energy storage. We've now completed lesson three. If you enjoyed this tutorial, make sure to subscribe by clicking down below and leaving a comment of the topic that you'd like to see a video on. Click here to watch the rest of our videos in our A-Level Biology series, or visit our website, studymind.co.uk, for past paper compilations by topic and specification.